All right. I heard him moving. All right, so all these doors are locked. Maybe we can come back here later. The crew rooms. They get the smaller rooms. I hate that. Jack and Jill rooms are the worst. Well, these these ones have aren't Jack and Jill. They're just bunk beds. These nightmares have become unbearable. I still see the same man in the no my nocturnal visions, but now he is holding something in his hand, which I believe to be a lotus flower. We seem to be continuing this grave and serious conversation again and again, but I still can't remember the contents. During working hours, sometimes I hear his voice through the radio. It is not in a form of meaningful sentences, but more like some unconscious mutterings. I'm afraid to tell anyone about it. this, for I hate the very idea of the suspension I will probably be facing. Yeah, you don't want to tell anybody about a secret. You hear voices. Goggles. I wonder why you can interact with that. One of the comp composite sculptures we've come across during our initial field trips it has an open third eye on its forehead as well as inside its hand, which I think indicates some kind of state of knowing because illusions to, my, to knowledge and elder things that reoccur all the time in almost every base relief we've discovered so far. All this leads me to believe these creatures inhabiting the, those halls have acquired some kind of knowledge from the elder things, fabled creatures of primal myth. Another trophy item. Little baby picture. Butterfly statue. What is that? Hey, key. John DeWitt, or Johan DeWitt. These look like hands. It's locked. Locked. I wonder if they like hid the key somewhere. It's like alongside the the door frame. That's where I would hide it. Right, that's where we came from. James Barlow. Dr. Faust. Did I lock my door? I don't remember where my keys are. Oh yeah, it's probably for his locker. There we go. I found a note about a mental problem. Noticed a very curious and dangerous development in the psychological condition of the whole crew that compels me to record this note as an initial diagnosis report. The problem is especially intense for the three subjects, Dr. Barlow, Dr. Anderson, and Frank Gilman, who I have been inspecting closely since the onset of their psychological de degradation. During the past two nights, the aforementioned subjects awoke, screaming in their bed, thus affecting the demoralizing all the and demoralizing all the crew members. When I spoke to them personally, I noticed some serious deviations in their behavior patterns. As time progressed, I noted deep changes in their mental conditions. When really pushed, they clearly started to behave like someone else, which led me to believe I was facing some sort of multiple personality disorder, disorder but it's too early to draw any conclusions. Any other subjects are not too far 
a cry from their normal personalities, but the difference is, of course, obvious. Their condition is getting worse day by day, and a serious medical examination is needed to be carried out on everybody displaying such symptoms. I informed Dr. Foss and warned him about the consequences. He looked worried, but nevertheless has mentioned it to me since, or hasn't mentioned it. Whether, with the weather conditions we have been having lately, it seems extremely unlikely that we shall receive professional help from the outside world or will be able to send anybody away for a thorough medical examination, which is the only sane thing to do under the circumstances. Secrets. If his coat is just right here, where is he now? There we go. Good thing we came back there. It's a lot of information. A few secrets. And a talking robot. Surprisingly, he was the less knowledgeable one. It's stuck. Oh, alright. <laughs> There's that shadow form. I wonder if we should be worried about that. Is this where we use that crank? Link elevator has been set up. It can reach both the tower and bottom levels down below the base now. Camp equipment. The parts for portable submarines were started to be transported to the first campsite. Looks like I need something to get this elevator to work. How do I look at my items again? Yeah, you can use this. Use this. How do we do that? What was the need for such security measures? All right, we'll come back there. It's like they kept a, a tree inside a greenhouse it's stuck that's what's giving everybody oxygen provisional camp equipment has was deployed to the underground caverns below the base without any problems it won't open Let's take some mushrooms and just trip out. Forget our problems. Are those spores? Dr. Foss is very tight lipped about how he came up with the strange exploration device he built long ago. The only thing he has told me is that he came across some shunned and forbidden volumes about a device of extraterrestrial origin, but again, these sources didn't, do not hint that any existed on Earth except in the, the dreams of those who like to chew a certain alkalobial herb, lodial herb. The sessions we hold in the meeting room to adapt our nervous system to the alien impulses of the machine were frightening at first. If used too much, it, it affects the body to breaking point. But now I'm used to this non-human sensation. I've started to feel like the device is clearing my mind to make it absorb much more than ever before. I feel unconfined and much more receptive. But the most peculiar aspect of the sessions are that it 
because it is a shared experience. It is a shared experience. I'm able to receive impressions, ideas, and even more, even memories, which belong to other participants. Usually my mind wanders after the sessions end, and I cannot focus my thoughts until I have slept for several hours. That strange device surely disorients feelings and body functions, but I believe that what it offers is immense importance. Is this some kind of cylinder found a ph phonograph c cylinder F phonograph I think they mi misspelt photograph here we go this is where we use the crank what is it doing upstairs? Oh! Alright. Is that a shadow kitty? No? Alright. I think that's just an actual, just... A cat. That's not good. <laughs> Don't want to inhale spores from an alien plant. Alright, I think we're tripping out. Mutating. Oh, all right, all right. Okay. That was weird. Photograph of the pyramids. New campsite was established waiting for samples. There is a problem with one of the free, I can't read that. I marked it. You must be checked immediately. The hell is this? Some kind of plant. Some unknown text. Can't read it from here. Antarctica. Let's follow the wires. Here we go. Oh, this opens now. Where did that? I tried that last or before. Oh shit! All right, let's get back. Oh, damn! All right. It's still a vis vision. Oh, here we go. We found somebody. Who is this? It's impossible to determine with so much decomposition. He has a key. We finally finished excavating the monolith that was silently waiting for a soul to see it again. Situated within the circular building we, we re reached with the link elevator, that magnificent piece of carving was buried halfway down under a mound of 
debris. It most probably could have been written in the earliest pages of history. I cannot describe exactly my feelings for the first time when I stood aghast. I con contemplating that gigantic stonework inside of the, those time-worn halls of silence. Only God knows how many ages have passed since its initial carving. Just thinking about it, its age sends sh shivers down to my spine. Which civilization could have constructed such grandeur? Now waving a forlorn goodbye without giving away the secrets of its masters. Furthermore, even though most of them are damaged beyond repair, we spotted some symbols resembling the rock art of the Sahara Desert in southeast Algeria. We don't have any strong evidence to suggest anything, but Cornell Blake clings mostly to the continental drift theory. In any case, we don't have enough data on its age, but it, it is evident that history needs to be rewritten yet again. Oh, yes. These are the pre-human species we found frozen in a cave far south of the base. Alright. Oh, yes. It's like they're melting. These are the pre-human species we found frozen in a cave far south of the base. Alright, so he knows that. He kind of knows what's going on. Oh, there's the key. What's going on? There it is. Can we harbor ourselves on the safest shores for there are things that cannot be undone? I think you should retire to your room. I am going to think a bit more. There's that plant. Is that a map of the earth? Skull. All right, I can go that way. Made in China. All right, let's go. Have a flashlight. Oh, there we go. I think I recognize this painting. here. Locked. It's locked. Yeah, everything is locked. It'd be surprising if it was open. A little concerning too. Hear something breathing locked. behind that door. Hmm. Locked. All right, I'm not turning around. Oh, maybe I should. It's locked. Oh shit! What do I do?
Okay, that triggered a memory. First canarium event and a brief visit to the past. I am at a complete loss for words. Simple remarks are insufficient to express my feelings right now. Was it a premonition or a vision? How, how should I interpret all of this? I don't know exactly. Suddenly I found myself drifting into a familiar room. A room that was long buried in my graveyard of memories. Scribed on epitaphs of things long past. Antarctica. Another sketch. That's a nice, it's a really nice sketch. The guy's an artist. A somewhat humanoid in form, these sculptures initially reminded us of terracotta army. Sculptures carved as of funnery art, buried with the first emperor of China to protect him in the afterlife. But judging by the writings on some of the bass or base reliefs, we now now we believe that these wooden puppets of or golems were used to carry out some task for their masters, just like the Egyptian Hashab Hashab Tio. Well, Pronunciation of the Zs. Other notes. Diverse or Dev. The Dev. Dever Sai Sai. <laughs> the Dever Sai. That's what I'm going to call it. The legendary drink of. The oldest myths. I heard about the elusive mixture decades ago when I was writing my thesis on Salvia Divin Div Norum. There's a lot of devs in this. Also known as the Sage of Diviners, an entheogenic plant used mostly in relig religious or shamanic ceremonies for centuries. No one could gather any information about it other than its legendary mystical psychoactive properties. In some sources, it was the drink of the gods, while in others, a key for opening gates to places that lie beyond, beyond conventional human senses. The sole bridge to be passed in order to leave the bodily restrictions of the flesh. Most scholars would kill it even for a hint about one of its lost ingredients. It's something I was on the lookout for throughout my career. A new formula is forming in my mind. I feel like there is a chance for me to produce. If not the original, then a variant of the legendary mixture. With new clues I have uncovered during my work here. It's probably talking about G Fuel. The legendary mixture. I think we go now. We found that weird cylinder thing, the phonograph cylinder. Wonder if we Stop. use this, use that on the door. Hey, this is open. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was open before. Right. I don't know if you can hear me, but I am trying. Searching. The only way. This is the only way. Hey, hey, can you hear me? Damn it. Who was he? I don't know, but he knew me. I wonder if uh, I had to activate that little capsule thing with the plant in it. I wonder if I needed to open that to regress. Looks like I need something to get this elevator to work. Cavern entrance. The depot. 
Is this open now? No. Wait. It's stuck. Might use that cylinder some somewhere else, maybe on the first floor. Wait, no, no. Here we go. Right here. Unfortunately, one of our researchers. C. That's what it Lenning, is. Was found dead in the bio lab last Tuesday. Cause of death is currently uncertain, but judging by the accumulation of a mass of green substance found in his mouth and throat area. Dr. Barlow, our botany expert, thinks that Lenning was smothered by small, sticky, greenish clumps that look like pollen, belonging to the living samples of the plant Sahiti, which is thought to have become extinct during the Paleozoic era. Dr. DeWitt will perform a post-mortem examination on his body soon. Is that this guy? Wait, he's gone. Oh no, he's, he's right here. Did I check everything in this room? I don't know. Here we go. Okay, that's for the elevator. The lever. hard to tell sometimes what you can interact with. Yeah, so far this game is really cool. Very intriguing. You're building up to something. I like when games do that you know they're they're trying to tell a story using the environment and random notes in the world it's this another crank an ornamental met metallic object oh well, here's the the temple that they found uh. or cavern Most of the ground level structures have been crumbled and rounded from untold eons of savage storms and thus weathered into shapeless ruins. However, both the ground level and the cavern systems below are clearly displayed in these bas reliefs. The most it's striking boss. features depicted in this grand panorama, I believe, are the tall, occasional towering spires, which somehow resemble a lighthouse. They all seem like focusing a light beam towards a colossal structure in the center. Hmm. Could there be some sort of religious meaning behind this? Or simply something that has a more practical use? I'm not sure. Ancient stuff. This looks like Morrowind. <laughs> Look at that. The architecture. Forget what that race is called. So we're in the lighthouse right now. Can't go that way. This is the strong light that can be seen from ground level.
Oh, yeah. Look, we could have went up or down. Let's go up. Let's keep going up. No, never mind. go down and axe I'll definitely grab that defend myself Missed the page. <laughs> Which page is it? Oh, here. I think. I think it's this one. No, it's not. Okay, it's in documents. There. There's some strange vegetation vegetation filling most of the hallways. As amazing as it's, it's deadly. There's a hidden world right beneath the, a biot base, and even though I was prepared to find such a place. It was way different than imagining alone. We tried to cut our way th through, but the plant reacted with a highly poisonous gas, seemingly coming from its own glowing buds. I used a warning to stop anyone going near any of these plants they came across in any of these those caverns. I also noticed a strange phenomenon after I spent some time examining a sample from the plant. It occurred to me that individual vines grow and shrink in length on demand. It also seems as though it can move even though there is no air currents and this movement seems too regular to be caused by natural factors. This may sound strange but I have the notion that it is conscious at least on some level. 